Hey everyone, it's Jenny, and welcome back to my channel, This Story Ain't Over. So today I'm coming to you with another personalized book recs video. So a lot of you loved the first one that I did where I recommended a bunch of books based off of like little asks that you guys had put in on Instagram. And a lot of you asked for a part two. So I kept losing the answers that I had gotten from Instagram, like from the first time I asked, uh, because it won't show me like my old answers to stories anymore. So I had to put up an ask again and now I'm going to recommend based off of those asks. So these will be books that, you know, fit that specific ask or ones that are similar to a book that you guys already loved. I haven't prepared for this in any way, shape or form. So I'm literally gonna just go through the answers and see if I can find something to recommend. And hopefully this will go all right. All right, so the first person asked, something fantasy with enemies to lovers. All right, I immediately thought of Bone Criers of Moon by Catherine Purdy because this involves two characters who are meant to hate each other. So in this world, there are things called bone criers, which are these women who are tasked with ferrying the souls of the dead to the underworld. But in the process of becoming a bone crier, you are tasked with this destiny of killing your fated love uh, in order to become a bone crier. So one of our main characters, Sebastian, his father was killed by one of these bone criers um, who happened to be like the woman that he fell in love with after having Bastion. And so Bastion has always wanted to get revenge on these bone criers for what they did to his father. And then one of our other main characters, Aless, is an actual bone crier and she is meant to kill her destined love who happens to be Bastion. And so she is determined to kill him because she has just always been trained to become a bone crier. You know, she thinks that this is right. And then he also thinks that she's horrible and that, you know, he wants to take revenge. And so they end up kind of hating each other at the beginning. And there's also a, you know, plot line of him kidnapping her and this whole thing. And it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this book actually. And I think the enemies to lovers thing was done quite well. Uh, so I thought it was a fun kind of fantasy enemies to lovers. All right. So someone asked for a slow burn sci-fi amongst other things. I don't know if this technically counts as a sci-fi. It is a dystopian, which is the legend series. And it does have some kind of sci-fi elements because it's set in the future. But I do feel like the romance in this series is actually a bit of a slow burn. You're certain that the characters like each other and both characters are kind of aware of it in the first book, but I do feel like the, you know, process of them getting together gets dragged through the entire series. And so for that reason, I felt like it is quite a bit of a slow burn to see them actually get together. I absolutely love the series and I cannot recommend it enough. The romance is just like a small part of it, but it makes me ache with angst every time I think about it. So yeah. <laughs> Someone asked for an adult fantasy and I can never not recommend The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This is like my all time favorite adult fantasy. I think I mentioned this in the last personalized book recs video, but just go read it. It's fantastic. For those of you who have never heard anything about it before, it is inspired by Asian history, specifically the Sino-Japanese Wars, and it is a full-on fantasy world, and it also involves a bit of shamanism, so like magical powers, um, the main character can control fire, and it's just overall a really interesting read and has a lot of kind of military aspects and like war aspects to it. So if you're not really into that kind of thing, um, you might not like it, but overall it's just like amazing and it has such flawed characters and it will definitely always keep you on your toes. Someone asked for a book with spring vibes and I immediately thought of The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagirdar and I think it's mainly because I read this during the spring, so I think that's why it gives me spring vibes. I read it last year, but basically this is an FF romance between between a Bangladeshi Irish main character and then the Brazilian Irish love interest. And so it kind of examines the experience of queer POC characters um, and people. And it was just a really sweet romance as well, but it also has some other topics of like cultural appropriation and um, also involves a lot of henna because they're putting on henna in the book um, and have a little like henna businesses. But it was also just a really kind of like fun contemporary coming of age story that I really enjoyed. Um, and is perfect for spring. Someone asked for second chance romance and I don't usually recommend classics, but I actually really love the second chance romance in this one. And that's Persuasion by Jane Austen. This involves two characters who like were kind of infatuated with each other when they were really young, but their families kind of rip them apart uh, because they're like, you know, you're not good for each other. It's mainly the like main character Anne's uh, family who kind of rips her away from the guy and they mainly do it because he's not like good enough for her, that kind of thing. And so he comes back like many years later having become a lot more accomplished and they get to meet again and they reconnect again, but it turns into a little bit of like an enemies lovers type 
situation, I felt like. And I really enjoyed the rest of it. It's been a really long time since I read this though. I think I read it in high school, but I remember really enjoying it. Someone asked for my favorite enemies to lovers story, and I definitely have to go with Actor Age Eva Brown by Talia Hibbert. I recently finished this and absolutely loved it, but this is definitely an enemies to lovers situation at the very beginning. I feel like most enemies to lovers books that I've read um, go from like enemies to like friends and then to lovers. And I feel like this one also takes that trajectory, but it's very strong like enemies at the beginning, I think. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I think that like, it seems like they're not right for each other at the beginning, but then they end up being totally perfect for each other. And I love that. And it's just super, super cute. And on a kind of similar slash opposite note, someone asked, everyone is obsessed with enemies to lovers, but I'd actually like to try some good friends to lovers. And so I have two for this. One of my favorite friends to lovers ever is Mal and Alina in Shadow and Bone. A lot of people are gonna hate on me for this, but I love Mal and Alina. Their relationship is just so like interesting and just so real, I feel like. It's very reflective of like a friends to lovers situation in real life, even though it is in a fantasy book. And I love the place that their relationship ends up at by the end of the series. But yeah, basically like the two of them are childhood friends, like in an orphanage together at the beginning of the series and they kind of grow and learn from each other as they grow up and I and I really love that. So yeah, it's super great and I love them together. There are just so many iconic lines between the two of these characters as they start to realize their feelings for each other. And then another Friends to Lovers story that I really love is in Frankly in Love by David Yoon. This involves our main character, Frank, who is like secretly dating this white girl at his school, but he knows his Korean parents would never approve. And so he decides to fake date his family friend, Joy, uh, in order to continue dating his like actual girlfriend. And Joy also has like an actual boyfriend on the side as well. And so they're both kind of putting on this charade so that they can continue their respective relationships without their Korean parents finding out. But their fake relationship definitely turns into something more and it's just super, super cute. And I love their kind of relationship even before they start doing the fake dating thing because they're very comfortable with each other. They both have experienced a lot of the same things as like Korean American kids. And I think that they were just adorable. I definitely do think that the romance isn't the like main plot of this book though. It really is about Frank and his like coming of age story and his, you know, identity as being Korean American and how he struggles with that, but I still did like the romance in it. Alright, the next person asked for something cute and fluffy and fast-paced involving teens. So I have a couple for this. I have I'll Be The One by Lila Lee. I keep recommending this all the time because it is the most cute and fluffy thing ever. I love our main character, Sky Shin. She is a bisexual, fat, Korean American girl trying to like be her best self in a world that keeps telling her that, you know, she can't be who she is. And she is basically entering a K-pop competition to become a K-pop star and is dealing with all of the negativity from that. But she is also kind of falling in love and, you know, finding herself. And it is just such a fun and cute read. It was very fast paced. I felt like it's just a quick, fun, cute read. And it just like puts a smile on your face. And then I'm actually in the middle of reading Charming as a Verb by Ben Philippe. And I started this like literally a day ago and I already love it. It's just so much fun and so cute. And it feels like a shot of serotonin to your veins. And it is also kind of fast paced. It involves a little bit of a romance between two characters who seem unlikely to fall in love, but um, they are going to. And our main character, Halty, is actually this very like charming kind of guy. And I just love like some of his dialogue in the book, like, and like the things that he's thinking. Um, so it's just a lot of fun. All right, someone asked for a fantasy book with strong female friendships. So I have to actually mention again, Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy, because there's actually two main female characters in this book, uh, Aless and Sabine. And I didn't actually mention Sabine when I explained this before, but uh, Sabine is also a bone crier, but she doesn't actually want to be one, whereas Aless is like the perfect bone crier. And they are best friends in this book. And I think it's a really interesting situation. They're very supportive of each other, but also they have like kind of a fraught relationship because of everyone's expectations of them. And I think it's just so interesting how their relationship kind of plays out as friends. And I'm so curious to see where it's going to go in the next book. But they are definitely very supportive friends, and I loved their friendship in this book. And then the other one I would recommend is The Ember and the Ashes like Quartet, the entire series, because there are multiple female friendships in this series that I think are just phenomenal. There's one in particular in the first couple books between Laia and Izzy, which I think is just so sweet and just so perfect and just the most supportive like female friendship relationship I've seen. And then there's another one that comes much later in the fourth book, which I really, really loved. And it 
it's between two characters who seemingly hated each other and like you know would never like each other but end up coming to become friends which I really really loved so this one definitely has like some really great female friendships all right next someone asked for something with a found family and I always have two for this which is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo and The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chakshi if you don't know what a found family is it's basically when people find a family amongst people they aren't actually like blood related to and so in both of these books I feel like it is a large cast of characters and they all find kind of a family amongst these other characters who are not related to them and who are kind of the most unlikely people that they would be friends with or family with but they end up you know finding a place with each other and all of them are kind of young teens who have been abandoned by other kind of actual family and so they only have these other friends these other people um these other characters and it's just a really sweet found family situation so yeah both of these fantastic all right next someone asked for urban YA fantasy so urban YA fantasy is basically like sort of paranormal fantasy but like set in a city landscape with like some sort of supernatural aspect so any kind of Cassandra Clare book really fits that but I have a few that I really love um so one is the Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. This is a situation where vampires are real and they've become a part of like our regular world um, and they are kind of treated like celebrities. So there are these places called cold towns where vampires are kind of sequestered to, you know, do whatever they want in those towns and non-vampires can kind of volunteer to go into cold towns to be part of the celebrity but also be live donors for the vampires. And so this involves a girl who goes to this party and ends up the only one alive after a vampire attacks the whole party and her ex I think at the party gets attacked also but is also alive and there's threat of him you know turning into a vampire and so she's determined to take him to a cold town before he does and they also meet another vampire who uh, has a bit of a backstory and who joins with them on the way to this cold town so yeah it's definitely like an urban fantasy you are getting like the vampire aspect but also like the city aspect of it and it was just a really interesting read it is a standalone and I think I've never read anything like it so it's just super cool uh, so if you're into urban fantasy I think this one's definitely a good one and then I could not go without recommending Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This is one of the best urban fantasies I have ever read. It is so incredible because it kind of weaves in the legend of King Arthur and also some supernatural elements of like demons and shadow creatures and things that the secret society of people called Legendborn are meant to fight off. And our main character is this young black woman who ends up going to this pre-college program after her mother dies and she ends up getting wrapped up into the secret society of people, the Legendborn, and learn learning how the legend of King Arthur is like real and like the legend born are these descendants of Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and she gets kind of wrapped up in the legend born because she's trying to figure out what happened to her mother because she thinks that they might have something to do with her death and it was just a fantastic read and I loved the kind of supernatural elements of it but I also just love like the contemporary aspects of it as well and it was just a great urban fantasy and then the last one is one I actually haven't read but I'm so excited to pick it up and that is A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth and I'm so excited to pick this up because it is actually set in Toronto in Canada Canada, which is where I live and I love Toronto with all of my heart. I was born here and grew up here and um, have lived like in its vicinity for all my life and went to school there so it's very exciting to get something set in Toronto but this from what I know involves fairies and involves in FF romance I think like there's a bunch of queer characters and actually there's like this description that I remember reading out that was just so cool. The Cruel Prince meets City of Bones in this thrilling urban fantasy set in the magical underworld of Toronto as a queer cast of characters race to stop a serial killer whose crimes could expose the hidden world of fairies to humans. That just sounds like freaking amazing. So yeah, the queer aspect, the murder mystery set in Toronto. I just love it all. Super excited for it. All right, the next person asked for something with time travel and I would definitely recommend Invictus by Ryan Groudon. I think it's just such a really interesting concept. It's a lot like DC's Days of Future Past, that whole TV show. I think that's what it's called. But basically this follows a main character whose mother was like this certified time traveler in like the future and she traveled back in time to like ancient Rome and ended up getting impregnated by a gladiator and so her son who's a main character Far is basically born out of time on a spaceship traveling between different times and so he has always wanted to live up to his mother's legacy and become a you know certified time traveler as well. But when he fails his kind of entrance exam or like you know fails to get into the 
the program, he ends up deciding to take up a life of, you know, black market crime, where he enlists his crew of friends who all have different, you know, abilities and expertise, and they all travel back in time to different points in history to steal different artifacts and, you know, delicacies that the people in the future would pay a lot of money for on the black market. But things start to go a little bit awry when another character comes in and kind of threatens the you know, fine balance of their time traveling. Because if you do one thing wrong, you can like set the whole world off course. And so it's just very, very interesting. All right, the next person asked for something like Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. And I would definitely recommend Parachutes by Kelly Yang. I think I've recommended this like pairing a bunch of times. I don't know if I did it in part one, but I definitely did it in a, if you like this, then you'll like this video. But yeah, they both have very similar themes of kind of um, sexual assaults, but also just characters who are forced to grow up faster than they should have to. And so for that reason, I think that they pair really nicely. And I do feel like both books also have that kind of sense of powerlessness that is so frustrating, but it's just so true. And so, yeah, I definitely recommend both of them, uh, but Parachutes is also equally fantastic. Someone asked for hard hitting queer story. So I have a couple for this. One of my favorites is The Love and Lies of Roxana Ali by Sabina Khan. This involves a lesbian uh, Bangladeshi American teen whose parents find out that she's a lesbian and basically cart her off to Bangladesh to kind of pray the gay away and just like get it out of her and start arranging a marriage. And so she is kind of dealing with this entire situation and you know the whole queer POC experience. But there's also a lot of nuances to the way that this is told and I thought that it was just so well done. It definitely has some really difficult parts to it, but it also has a lot of hope to it, and I just loved it so much. And then the other one is Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazmian, and this is actually set in New York City during the AIDS crisis, and it falls three different kind of queer teens. And I thought it was just so interesting because of the way that the different, you know, perspectives kind of interact and intersect. And it is definitely a bit of a difficult story because you're hearing of different people like dying from AIDS and, you know, the fear that's kind of running through the city. But it is also a very hopeful story and kind of a love letter to queerness. So it's really great in that way. Someone asked for something like Infernal Devices. And I don't know if I've made this comparison before, but I definitely think it fits. And the book I would recommend is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, because I really feel like both of these books are set in kind of a historical period and they both involve a supernatural element and they involved characters trying to figure out some sort of mystery that's going on and why the supernatural elements are kind of going on. Although the Infernal Devices has like the very, you know, pointed aspect of the shadow hunters and like them fighting demons and all of that, I do feel like like in These Violent Delights, it also has a little bit of that aspect because there is a monster running rampant in the streets of Shanghai in the 1930s, and it is causing this sickness or plague that is killing people off. And it's just super interesting, I think. And the whole mystery aspect is a really strong component of it, aside from, you know, the whole Romeo and Juliet situation. But it's a lot of fun and I highly recommend. All right, someone asked for a contemporary to wreck their soul, and I have two for this. So the first is A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tara Mafi. This is both a very sad story, but also one that is so beautiful and very like romantic, and also just like leaves you like without words by the end. It follows our main character, Shireen, who is a 16 year old Muslim American girl who has been facing a lot of, you know, Islamophobia. This is set during, I think, 2002. And so she's just kind of trying to navigate her, her life without getting, you know, all of this hate. And when she and the kind of perfect boy at school kind of fall in love, it creates a lot of tension in the community around them and at their school. And um, it is both a beautiful love story, but also like a very harrowing book to read. It it is very short and very powerful and will just leave you like wrecked by the end. And then the other contemporary I would recommend to wreck your soul is Challenger Deep by Neil Schusterman. This book is just so incredible and it actually follows a main character with schizophrenia um, or a schizophrenia adjacent like disorder and it is following that main character's perspective as he has his kind of delusions but also his like real life and as he's going through therapy and getting treatment and you're seeing the way that his delusions kind of intersect with his real life and it is so interesting but also just so powerful and it does come from a place of truth because the author's son has a similar mental illness and he did play a part in writing the book and he also contributed these illustrations that you find in the book as well so it's a super interesting overall read and like just 
one of the best, like, YA contemporaries I've read. Okay, I think those are all the books that I'm going to recommend today. There are just so many answers that I got in, so I'm going to screenshot all of the ones I got in, the ones that I, like, didn't get to today, and I will try to answer them in maybe, like, a part three, because just all of you have so many, you know, recs that you want, and I'm trying to provide them all. But if you would like me to do, like, a full video on a specific type of, like, topic or you know wreck that you want like say historical fantasies or like enemies to lovers or whatever leave those down below in the comments so that I can like draw on them for later because I know there's like a lot where I can like give you the one-off recommendation but there's also a lot where I could give you like 10 different books that fit that category so yeah let me know and I will definitely do those videos for you because I just love recommending books and thank you so so much for sending your answers in and for watching this video but yeah if you haven't already go check out my Instagram and go follow me it's at the story ain't over I'm always putting up these question boxes to get ideas from you guys for videos I think it's just a really nice way for me to interact with you guys because YouTube does feel a little bit one-sided so yeah definitely go follow me there and thank you so so much for watching I will see you in my next video and please remember that the story ain't over bye